Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, there's not really much going on in the news, but I want to share with you some information that I came across that I think could help a lot of people potentially. So first up and only up, uh, Bitcoin Loans Simple Tax Guide. And this is one of the things that people have talked to me uh, a number of times about, about not selling your cryptocurrency. And we've actually done a video beforehand about uh, crypto uh, loans and I've talked about the different platforms that are out there like a Celsius and a BlockFi and there was two others and I'll link it at the very end. But uh, for this one, uh, it was by our friend uh, Sheehan Chandrasekara. He's a uh, certified CPA and he's a cryptocurrency expert and that's what he delves into. So this one made me think a lot about what potentially could happen as far as like not about not paying taxes, but transforming it into different assets that could really be uh, beneficial as time goes on. So we'll take a look at this, this article. Uh, but first, I want to talk about a, the giveaway that we had said about our cryptocurrency art. And uh, this, is going, this is going to be Cass, and uh, we just picked them, uh, it just was picked at random. And he said, hey there, are you serious? Let me know what you need, I'll send it over, thanks. And actually, we've already contacted him, and he's going to be winning are going to be having the uh, cryptocurrency artwork that uh, we had featured on the uh, platform uh, a couple of days ago, two or three days ago or so. And just so you know, uh, this was actually somebody had reached out to me, uh, a subscriber, and said, hey, I, I, I source different artists around the world, and we do uh, custom prints on acrylic, and we are trying to launch uh, uh, pretty soon, and uh, they have just launched right now. So this is actually what uh, BCAS is getting. Uh, they are nice acrylic paintings, and uh, I'm going to link this uh, this website in the description below, and you can pick one up. And I know the NFTs are all the rage right now, and people want NFTs. That's great. I mean, I even have one. I I, I got a, a Batman on Vive or VV or however the heck you say it, and uh, it's great. It looks really good. Probably be worth billions. I don't know what's going to be, but I just thought it was cool. But uh, these things right here, I mean, you got a different set of everything that you could ever want uh, as far as like uh, images for to display like one of your, your top uh, crypto holdings or one of the products that you like. A lot of Bitcoin heavy type of things, but there's other stuff. There's uh, Ethereum and Litecoin, and EOS, and uh, I think Cardano's here somewhere, and, and Ethereum, like everybody seems to live, uh, which we all like, right? So yeah, you can check that out. Prices are pretty good. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, sourced in America. And just so you know, there's a link in the description. Looks something like this. Uh, acrylic crypto art painting. 15% off code with Dan. And then there's a the link itself. So when you go there, just remember that when you pick it up, you just have to put Dan, D-A-N, in the coupon. You get 15% off. And uh, that's it. So if you want to pick those up, check that out. And uh, also, I just want to make mention that uh, this has been going around a lot. I had posted this that uh, tomato coin actually exists and we actually minted it. <laughs> we actually minted it on the Cardano blockchain. And there was a, an article that just came out that uh, native assets are now available in the Daedalus wallet. So if you download Daedalus, Daedalus wallet, you can have native assets. And one of those uh, could be tomato coin. So what I will be doing, or me and the team are going to be doing, is giving away, it's going to be uh, just 100 tomato coins uh, to random people uh, as an airdrop. And you'll see that in <laughs> your Daedalus wallet as time goes on. And I actually posted about this. I go, hey, tomato coin is live. And then people were, you know, nice little gifts and images and things like that. And uh, I just want to make mention of one thing. And that is and that is this, that uh, tomato coin is a joke. It's like Dogecoin. Uh, it's at no absolute value. I even tell you that uh, tomato coin is putting marinara on the blockchain. We're putting, mar we're putting tomorrow's marinara on the blockchain today. And uh, I just talk about how it's being backed by Olive Garden. And uh, it's just, it's just for fun. So don't, because people have been, been uh, messaging me like, how can I get some? And what's the minimum buy? I'm like, don't buy it. It's just a joke. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at what's going on uh, into the market. So just so you know, let me blow this up so you can see. Uh, it's a red day. And uh, this happens if you're new to cryptocurrency. First of all, welcome. Uh, second of all, just know that uh, there's a lot of dips. It is very volatile, like uh, your friends have told you like uh, the news media has told you. And it's just, this is just a normal thing. So when we start to see like, like these rises, you're gonna see a pullback because that's healthy. That's what we wanna see. You can't go up forever because the higher the hockey stick or the uh, momentum that goes up, the uh, inverse reaction, which is just to drop back down by that much or even more so. So 
when we see a little bit of pullbacks, this is good news. So we got uh, Bitcoin still 58.2. I think we hit a high around 59,200 or something like that. Market cap's around 1.78 trillion, 1 1.8, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, that's doing good. Uh, Ethereum is down a little bit. Binance Coin's up a percentage. Wow, watch out. Polkadot's up 5%. But uh, And then, of course, Filecoin is just on an absolute massive tear. Uh, Filecoin is, is all about storing um, cloud software or cloud files uh, on the blockchain. I think it's going to be very huge. And I remember when it was just like 30 bucks. Now here we are. So and take a look at that. But everything, oh, Tron's up 10%. Uh, BitTorrent, wow, 30%. My friend George is going to be super happy with that. And uh, just around, uh, not so good. 11% for Holochain. Remember, they just got uh, awarded that US patent uh, three or four days ago. So yeah, this is just normal things. This is what's going on in the market. All right. So let's talk about uh, real quick. Oh, actually, uh, one more thing to note. That is that uh, on Bitcoin, see it like it was at 59.2 and it, it crashed like a couple thousand. When these things happen, just so you know, people are going to get uh, liquidated and they're going to be pretty upset. So you're going to see things on Twitter and stuff like this. Bitcoin flash crashes by 2K. It wasn't a flash crash. It was people taking profits because you got to remember uh, some people have been holding for a, for a while. There are traders out there. There are hedge funds. There are institutions. And they're going to want to take profits. And here is what we see. So uh, you get a flash crash and that liquidated $600 million worth of people in their long position. So if you're a trader, better luck next time. And that's really all I can tell you. All right. So the article. And I thought this was pretty good. Uh, first of all, thanks. Uh, shout out to Sheehan for putting together just fantastic work on what's going on with taxes. Now, Taxes are different everywhere throughout the world, so I can't really tell you uh, your specific rules and regulations and things like that where you live. But for a lot of the places, this is going to hold true in some way, shape, or form. Once you sell your, your crypto or use it for goods and services, and again, not everywhere, but a lot of places, it is a taxable event. So what do you do with these great assets that you have acquired? And how are you going to actually, you know, uh, make these things work? And then uh, before we go on, just so you know, I still have the wired headphones. And uh, we're in this lovely chateau here in, <laughs> in Puerto Rico. We'll be here for the next, uh, I think, four, three or four days. So uh, we'll be back to business as usual uh, starting next week. But I just want to get out this information. So Bitcoin loans. And I had talked about this before. And I thought it was a pretty risky proposition. But the way that Shan lays it out, I, I can see where, where we could go. And it really comes down to what's going to happen as far as like uh, with the four-year cycle, which I'll get into a second. So receiving a Bitcoin loan, receiving cash for depositing your cryptocurrency as collateral is not a taxable event, right? So on the different platforms, and like I said, there's like, there's like four, there's probably more now. I use Celsius personally because I trust them. I invest in people. Alex Mashinsky, he was the gentleman who created voice over internet protocol. He's had three, uh, I think th two or three billion dollar companies or multi-million dollar companies, uh, successful exits. And uh, he seems to want to do the great things for uh, the community. So uh, I'll invest in that all day long. And uh, over there, you can take a loan and it's a pretty simple process. There's no like background checks. There's no like, we're gonna pull your credit. It's just, you put up collateral and then you get your loan in cash. And again, it's not a taxable event. This is similar to getting a home equity line of credit where you collateralize your home with the bank of cash. Okay, sure, we know that. So spending the loan, this is the big thing. Spending the cash received from a crypto-backed loan is not taxable either. So you get cash, you spend on whatever you want to. There's a catch. You can spend the cash proceeds without incurring taxes. However, failure to repay the loan could lead to a tax event. This is why. Um, rate fluctuates, but is generally in the ballpark of 5%. So when you want to get a loan, 5% is not bad. Try going to a bank. You know how long that takes? First of all, you got to take in a lot of your documentation. They're going to pull your credit. They're going to ask you a ton of questions and they're going to deny you. <laughs> it's just, this is really how it is. The banks love to give people money who don't need money. And the people who need money, they're like, no, sorry, we, we can't help you out. Because that's the, that the banks, they're very risk aversive and they've had this in, in place for quite some time. If you've been to a bank asking for a loan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You always get money when you don't need money. Like, oh, we see you have a ton of money. Why don't we give you more? Like, why would I want more from you? Because you're just going to overcharge me and you can do fractional reserve lending. I don't want to deal with you. So uh, it's just one of those things. Uh, of course, it's, that's, that's hyperbole. Uh, some people still want to have loans and uh, use the bank's money. I understand. 
A business purpose for the loans would be a situation where you invest the loan proceeds in a rental property, rental property, or an ongoing business with the intention of making a profit. In this case, your crypto loan interest expense is deductible on the business tax return. So you can take out that loan, you can roll it into your business, business expenses, investment properties, and the percentage or the interest that you're being charged, you can write that off also as taxes. So you don't get taxed on what you take out because it's a loan against your crypto. Crypto is safe, stays right there. Uh, and then you can let it ride or let it go up. The money that you have, you can invest into a certain asset and what they are charging you as far as interest, uh, 3%, 5%, it doesn't really go up too much, uh, 7%, 8%, depending where you go to. Then you can write that off uh, as tax, uh, as, as for uh, tax losses. So that's pretty good. And then uh, paying off a loan. And this is where it gets tricky. Paying back a loan and unlocking your crypto collateral is not a taxable event. Great. So you have this money, you put into something, that assets or that business or that venture, it pays you back. You get that money and pay back your loan. That's really how it's supposed to work. Um, and here's the example. Say David paid back 30000 to block buy and received back the one Bitcoin to deposit. Great. Uh, this is not a taxable event for David, even if the price of Bitcoin has gone up in value while it was locked as collateral. So perfect. David's like, I need thirty grand, right? So he's going to have to probably collateralize. If he wants thirty grand, he'd probably have to collateralize a, a couple of Bitcoin because it's not just one for one. It's going to be one for two, one for four. Just depends on the race you want to get. And you can watch the video where I talk about that, about the four different platforms. He's going to get that money and uh, he pays it off slowly. And then he gets the Bitcoin back after a year, two years, three years. Let's say Bitcoin is 30,000, whenever, right? Let's say it was 30,000 for a week, a month ago. And then David puts it in, gets $30,000 in, uh, in cash, does some things with it. And four years later, he's like, here, I, I paid back my money. They're going to give him back those two Bitcoins as collateral. And whatever the Bitcoins are, if they're worth 150,000, 300,000, half a million, a mil I don't know what's going to be. I have no idea. That's not taxable, but, and he gets all that money, all that Bitcoin back, and that's a great asset, right? So to finish up, when do you have to pay taxes on Bitcoin loans? This is the part that you gotta pay attention to. If a loan is not paid back, the lending platform can liquidate your collateral to cover their losses. The liquidation event can create a realized capital gain or loss event for you, and price volatility can also lead to liquidation. So again, if you put, uh, one Bitcoin up and you say, let's say you put two Bitcoin up. Let's say you want 100,000, right? No, 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 that's not a good one. Let's say you want $50,000 and say, okay, well, Bitcoin's around 50 grand right now, whatever it was, 50, 58. Let's just go with round numbers. Math is not my strong suit. So you say, okay, I want $100,000. Great. Give us two Bitcoin. You put up two Bitcoin, right? Give you, they, they give you uh, $50,000 and that's your collateral. So every month you got to pay so much at 5%. Now let's say some kind of event happens where the value of Bitcoin goes back, goes down substantially. So instead of 50,000 per Bitcoin, it goes down to 20,000, right? Is that gonna happen? I'm not saying it's gonna happen, I'm just saying that's, you know, what is it for this, this uh, rationale? If it goes down that much, you have to do one of two things, pay back that loan, or you have to re-collateralize to equal out the loan of what you had. You need 100,000 in some way, shape or form to really get that, that part up. So if this happens, you'd have to have some Bitcoin in reserves or cash in the bank, or you have to do something to do that. If they say, I can't do it, sorry. They liquidate you, and then you pay capital gains tax on which, what was just liquidated, and you're in a really uh, world to hurt. So this is a great option, but you have to know the ramifications of what you're going to do and how things are gonna work out. So to me, I think like this. When I heard, when I saw that one piece about uh, investment properties, I'm like, ooh, sign me up, let's hear it. But you have to understand, right now we're in a bull run. So if you're new to this, just know everything goes in cycles. Now, do I know exactly where it's gonna go tomorrow? I have no idea what's gonna go tomorrow. But you have to be aware of some things. First of all, four year cycles to me, the last eight years has pretty much been, been held true. Uh, actually, almost 12 years. So in 2012, we had the halving. Bitcoin gets cut in half, right? Went from 50 to 25, I think it was. Correct me in the comment section. That means that you have the same 
demand, but less supply. And uh, after that, next year, you get an all-time high. 2013 is good. Then, of course, this big hockey stick goes up. Smart money goes, that's unsustainable. And they start selling like crazy. And then you have a massive dip the next year. And then a reset where everything goes sideways the next year in 2015. Fast forward. 2016, halving. Goes from, goes from 25 to 12.5, right? Same demand, uh, but uh, not as much supply. Then the next year, all-time high. Big, huge hockey stick. Smart money goes, you know what? That's unsustainable. We've got to get out. And they sell like crazy. And then it goes sideways, reset. Then we had 2020. Went from uh, 12 to 6.5 or something. Yeah. 12.5 to 6.25, excuse me. And then it goes from, we just had it having, we'll probably hit an all-time high this year, which we, no, I'm sorry. We, we already have hit an all-time high. And who knows how far it's going to go up. I think it's going to go up pretty good. I think Bitcoin will hit on 150K. That's my conservative prediction. But the thing that's going to happen, I believe, is that we're going to have a dip and a reset, just like the other eight years before us. The question that I have to myself, though, is because of all these, let me pull this up. Because we have these things called uh, institutions and we have uh, all these different corporations uh, investing into Bitcoin, people are talking to me like, Rob, you understand that it's going to stabilize the Bitcoin market and it will just keep going up. Maybe. So you see like you got a, mi a micro strategy, a Tesla, a Square, a Marathon, Digital Holdings. They are uh, involved in mining. I actually have invested them as far as stocks. Not financial advice. Now this is financial advice. It's all information uh, just for you. Do your own research, all that great stuff. So we got a lot of people who are holding a lot of Bitcoin. Look at Grayscale. Uh, I think they got 3% of the total supply. Yeah, crazy. So total, we're looking at uh, 1.3 million. I'm sure that's not right. I'm sure they need to update it. It might be closer to 1.5, maybe even 2, 2 million Bitcoin. All these places are holding these types of things. And if they're a public company, they got to report that. So that's that. And then uh, uh, all these different places. So the question that, that I had to myself is not if altcoins are going to go down, because they will go down. Uh, people will start selling, especially when smart money goes, this is not sustainable. The question I have is, how much will Bitcoin be get sold off? And will these bear markets be like the six months, one year? year and a half, two years, or will it be a shortened time frame? I'm not sure. I'm not sure on Bitcoin, but on altcoins, I am 99.9% .9 sure that uh, all these people who hold it are like, you know what, <laughs> we don't really know what this can do, right? Like I talk to people like, Rob, you're a Cardano shill. You're a Voyager shill. Sure. All right. I'm a shill. So with, with Cardano, uh, they don't even have smart contracts. I mean, they have the ability. It's coming in, but not too many people are building on it. It's all speculation. We don't know what's going to happen, okay? The Voyager is going to roll, roll out this loyalty program on May 1st. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Maybe it could be fantastic. And all the other projects out there don't really do too much, except for StormX. Uh, StormX, actually, first of all, I own everything I talk about, I own. I'm super biased, obviously. So with StormX, just so you know, like my friend Ryan Gorman over there at Trade the Chain, he bought a pair of Adidas shoes like a month and a half ago. Uh, using StormX because he gets crypto back. And because of the of what they gave him crypto back, I don't know if it was in StormX or in Bitcoin or something like that. It, you, you, it just depends on the app. Uh, those Adidas were for free, essentially, because he got so much crypto back and, and just appreciated in value. So in that situation, that actually does something. And there's other things that actually do things, you know, just look for those. But um, as far as right now, I don't know what uh, is going to happen with the altcoins. So Bitcoin, potentially, I could see it. So here's the thing, and I talked about this before, like for investment properties, I can see this actually working out like if you need a down payment on an investment property, you're going to need 20% in most places, right? Uh, as your homestead, it could be very low or nothing, but for investment properties, 20%, right? So let's say it is a, I don't know, and we were looking at one of these properties here in Puerto Rico and... Uh, Here's the dining room, bedrooms, pretty nice, don't have to do anything, uh, pretty look, good looking place. And um, you don't have to, let's say that this place is round numbers, right? 100,000, okay, 100,000. So for the 20%, you're gonna need $20,000 down, right? So for that, you could put up 
Well, if Bitcoin's about 60,000, you could put up one Bitcoin as collateral. Say, I need 20 grand today because I got to put this down payment down. They do that. They give you the 20,000. Now, you can roll that in. I'm not going to say as an investment property, of course, this is the power of it because the loan that you get, you have to make sure it does something for you. It's not like cash is sitting in the bank because then you just got to pay everything back. But if you can use that money into a business, into products, into investment properties, like you could also do this for Amazon FBA. You could take that money, buy products from uh, retailers or whoever else and just go, you know, like, like we do with our Amazon business and just say, I, I need this, this and this. Here's $20,000, give that to me in uh, three months as a turnover uh, of, you know, the profit that you make. That's one example. And this one, you take this property, it's an investment property, you put it on, either you do a long-term or short-term rental. Again, there's a link in the description. Actually, if you go to danteachescrypto.com, 100% free, all the videos are there. So you don't have to search around for uh, YouTube. That's why I made this for you, 100% free. And you can take that and just go, okay, short-term rentals, Airbnb, because in Puerto Rico, it's a, a lot of people like to come here and hang out. So if you can do that, you can charge whatever you want to charge per night, depending on the area around you. You just look at airdna.org or .io and uh, see that. Money comes in, you pay the loan back, and everybody's happy. So that's a situation right there. The only thing is you have to be aware of, just like I talked about, is liquidation. So either you have money in the bank or you have uh, excessive uh, cryptocurrency that, that, that you can hold, and then off you go. If you don't feel comfortable with this, obviously don't do it. Not financial advice. This is just what I am going to do, and uh, that is pretty much it. So I see how this could be a pretty good uh, process, and uh, yeah, really that is it. So that is it for today. I just want to talk to you about uh, crypto loans and Shehan and everything else. I will link uh, Shehan's information. If you need a crypto CPA, he can definitely help you. Uh, he's, that's all he really does. And uh, that is it for today. So if you found value in the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel tremendously. Also, if you like these types of videos, consider subscribing as most things we talk about are time sensitive. And I uh, will link those two in the very end, left and right. That is it for today. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.